I am presenting the economic implications of fiber to the home infrastructure networks in the United States, a community level analysis. I would like to provide you with a little background before I begin with the presentation. The principal reason for my interest in this topic stems from the happenings in my hometown where the city parish government is in the early stages of introducing a city owned optical fiber infrastructure network. And upon further investigation of the topic, I began to realize that numerous cities seem to be naively entering into the planning phase of fiber introduction without any empirical evidence regarding the economic impact of fiber on the community. Only 21 communities installed fiber between 1999 and 2002, but according to the latest comprehensive listing of fiber to the home communities, over 1,000 communities in the United States are in some stage of the planning process that will result in the introduction or implementation of fiber to the home. And more recent data indicates that almost 8 million sites in the United States have been passed or pre-wired with fiber. And just as a side note, in thinking about global trends, fiber to the home is experiencing growth in all corners of the world. It is expected that the number of sites worldwide that will be reached by fiber optic technology will increase from approximately 11 million in 2006 to about 86 million in 2011. And so for the primary purpose of this research was to gain a greater understanding of the impact of fiber to the home initiatives at the community level. As such, my research question was as follows. Does the presence of fiber to the home infrastructure positively impact the economic development of communities within the United States? Daniel Bell's theory of the post-industrial society provided the theoretical basis for this research. In his latest writing on his theory, Bell comments on the economic effects that advanced infrastructure enables. Drawing from Bell's theory, this paper argues that the adoption, introduction, and diffusion of fiber optic networking capabilities is, as Bell asserts, a major instrument of change that increases the enhancement and further development of the economic realms of society. The theoretical basis for this research is supported by the philosophical conceptualizations of Daniel Bell's theory of the post-industrial society and the findings of previous literature. Importantly, it was necessary to integrate literatures from various disciplinary fields such as industrial economics, information management, telecommunications, and so forth. A leading authority in the adoption and diffusion of innovations literature, Edwin Mansfield, often writes about the importance of multidisciplinary research, focusing on all, also on its practical and economic implications. He says, the economics of technological change remains an area where there is a particular need for people who are comfortable working in and drawing on a variety of disciplines. Very few problems of any consequence can be solved within the confines of a single discipline. It continues to require persons who have a lively interest in both basic and applied work and who are able to use each to enrich the other. It is still an area needing people who like to work on ill-defined problems where little is known and nothing is tidy, but where the rewards for even a partial solution are very high. Those with such attributes should be encouraged to enter this field because the opportunities continue to be enormous. The economic impact of traditional infrastructure and telecommunications infrastructure has been studied for years. It has evolved from a focus on roadways and waterways to more of a focus on telecommunications, specifically telephones, which is a specific communications medium. Hardy conducted one of the very first studies on this and found that a strong positive correlation exists between the introduction of telephones and economic development. Later research on this topic conducted by Cronin and Roller and Waverman focused on identifying directional issues and determining causal relationships. Although examinations of the economic impact of specific telecommunications infrastructures are not new, the proliferation and innovation of fiber installations warrant renewed and extended investigation into this particular domain. As I mentioned earlier, investigations of the economic implications of broadband are primarily limited to those that, that appear in the professional literature. Thus, it was necessary to borrow from related scholarly literature regarding the hypothesized impact of fiber implementation on communities. As a result of the review of literature, the following hypotheses were developed. The presence of fiber to the home infrastructure positively impacts economic development in the following ways. Number of business establishments, as measured by number of business establishments. Labor compensation rates, as measured by average annual pay and annual payroll. Employment, as measured by annual number of employees and annual unemployment rate. 
and household income as measured by annual medium family income and poverty status. The research involved collecting longitudinal data. The sample consisted of communities that began offering fiber to the home services between 1999 and 2004 inclusive. The sample size consisted of 69 communities. Paired samples t-test were employed to understand the temporal impact of fiber to the home on the economic impact measures, and then repeated measures analysis of variance was then used to allow for consideration of covariates. The covariates used for the purposes of this research were temperature, tax climate, cost of living, housing value, crime rates, urban influence code, and union affiliation. This methodology allows for the most valid determination of impact should two conditions be met. Number one, that the passage of time since fiber to the home introduction has been sufficiently substantial to allow for impact to have developed and manifested in the variables under investigation. And two, that other potential determinants of economic health can be comprehensively identified and their influence isolated. This map shows the geographic location of all the communities included in the sample. You will notice that there is good geographic dispersion. It's interesting because in Kansas, for example, there are a whole lot of communities that have fiber to the home. And if you are familiar with the geography, you will notice these are rural communities. In fact, the majority of communities that implemented fiber between the 1999 and 2004 time frame were rural in nature. The results of the paired samples t-test indicated increases in numbers of establishments, average annual pay, and annual median family income, while a decrease is evident in the annual unemployment rate. Results, however, indicate an increase in poverty proportions during the pre- and post-period. And although results indicate an increase in annual payroll and a marginal increase in annual number of employees, neither of these yielded significant results. To further analyze the impact of fiber to the home on the outcome variables, repeated measures analysis of variance was conducted. While accounting for the covariates, results indicate a significant increase in number of establishments, annual payroll, annual number of employees, and annual median family income between the two time periods. Overall, this research did reflect an apparent impact from installation of fiber to the home in communities, particularly in terms of specific outcome variables included in this design. And even though it was under a relatively truncated time frame, it does offer some preliminary support for public policy decisions offering incentives or federal funding for fiber. To gain a richer understanding of the implications of these findings, this table offers useful and more in-depth information regarding the magnitude of the impact. Theoretical evidence exists to support increases and or decreases in total employment as a result of technological innovations. Importantly, it seems that these results confirm this mutual effect that is suggested by economic theory, that while fiber to the home may create a higher demand for employees, this advanced technological infrastructure may also facilitate labor-saving mechanisms that could result in slower employment growth. More specifically, results indicate that the annual number of employees significantly increased between the two time periods. Further, it appears that time accounted for 16% of the variance. No statistically measurable impact, however, was observed with regard to the annual unemployment rate. The results indicated a significant increase in the number of establishments between the two time periods, with time accounted for 24% of the variance. In further unveiling the results as they pertain to labor compensation rates, no statistically measurable impact was observed with regard to average annual pay, while annual payroll was found to have significantly increased. In fact, 18% of the variance is attributable to time. Further, annual median family income was also found to have significantly increased between time 1 and time 2, with time accounting for 21% of the variance. And although poverty was intended to be a proxy for family income, it is perhaps more valuable to consider poverty as indicative of the significant economic difficulties and the need for turnaround experienced by these particular communities under investigation. Most interestingly, the results definitively demonstrated that communities with fiber to the home reported a significant increase in the number of establishments, annual payroll, annual number of employees, and annual median family income between the two time periods. And so there is an economic impact, but perhaps not as much as anticipated, at least not as of yet. Maybe in the long term it will get there, but what the communities need to do is to make efforts to maximize the potential utility and benefit of fiber to the home. 
and so what communities could do to facilitate this and to capitalize on the positive economic benefits are these things that are listed on this particular slide. There could be policy interventions with a focus on education and training to ensure effective use of fiber to the home, particularly for local businesses. There could be subsidies to achieve fiber to the home network externalities, including applications. There could be federal subsidies for implementation, use, and mastery of fiber technologies to move closer towards attainment of critical mass across communities. It is possible that businesses are not reaping the full benefit of the bandwidth that fiber provides because parties they do business with do not have access to fiber technologies. In terms of short-term cost recovery and long-term economic development, in the short term, the fiber services or costs may need to be subsidized, but in the long term and once the efficacy of fiber is proven and network synergies have been achieved, fiber to the home could be a significant economic advantage to the city. The property would become more valuable as more companies and therefore individuals want to locate to this fiber to the home community. The presence of fiber connections on a particular property will thus add additional value to the land, resulting in long-term increases in property taxes. The increase of individuals within a community will also increase the amount of goods and services that are purchased in that community and therefore increase sales tax in the long term as well. The debates surrounding fiber to the home initiatives occur mostly at the local level, thus making it a substantial local policy issue. Perhaps the Department of Labor or the Department of Commerce could come up with some measure of gross domestic product at the community level. This would be helpful in providing a comprehensive snapshot of current economic conditions within a local area. Also inherent in these issues surrounding data collection are measures specifically related to fiber to the home. I am primarily speaking of the standardization of such metrics as diffusion and penetration. Capturing and standardizing this data would be very helpful in advancing research in this area. Thank you. This concludes my presentation.